Hello again. This is Jesse Cloninger for Music 101, Lane Community College. This is the first video in a series of videos um, starting into uh, diatonic triads and primary triads. Um, this is the video series that would follow just uh, dealing with triads. So the first thing we need to do, we've talked about major triads, minor triads, diminished triads, and augmented triads. And the next step is to take these different triad qualities and try to understand how they relate to major scales and major keys. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a major scale and we're going to build a triad on each note of the scale and we're going to look at what sort of triads we discover when we do that. So here we have a treble clef and let's just do this in C major. I'll leave some space. So I'm going to write out a C major scale. And I'll write out that last note, but we don't really need that one because it's going to be the same triad. It's this first degree. So there's our C major scale. I'm going to use a new pen. And I'm just going to go ahead. We have the key signature for C major. I'll even write it here. So triads, remember, are built on adjacent either lines or spaces. And so I'm going to build a triad on each of these degrees of the scale. So we're just using either adjacent lines or adjacent spaces all the way up. And I'm not going to do the last one because it's going to be the same as this. So now we're going to go through, and since we've gone through the process of learning about building triads, I'm not going to go through the inner workings of this. I'm going to move a little bit faster. Um, so C to E is a major third, C to G is a perfect fifth. So this is a C major triad. D to F is a minor third. D to A is a perfect fifth. So this is a D minor triad. E to G is a minor third. E to B is a perfect fifth. So this is E minor. F to A is a major third. F to C is a perfect fifth. So this is F major. G to B, major third, G to D, perfect fifth, capital G, G major. A to C, minor third, A to E, perfect fifth, so A minor. B to D, minor third, and B to F, diminished fifth. So this is our only diminished chord in the major scale is on the seventh degree, so B diminished. Of course this one would be C major. And so in the C major scale the chords that we find inherently a part of that harmony or that tonality are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and of course C major. And so when we refer to these, we can give each of these Roman numerals. And so, for major triads, we use capital Roman numerals. So, 1 is I in capital 1. For minor triads, we use lowercase. So, it's going to be 2, 3, major, so 4. Major 5, minor 6, oops, diminished 7. So now we've given each degree of the scale an, a chord name as well as a Roman numeral identification that indicates the quality. So major 1, minor 2, minor 3, major 4, major 5, minor 6, and diminished seventh. 
Now, the good thing about this, this is sort of an overview about the sort of intrinsic harmony of the major scale. Some of these chords are more important than others. I'm not going to lie to you. We're not really going to talk about the diminished chord too much. This is probably the last time we're going to talk about it a whole lot. Um, it has its very important role in what we do with music, but there's sort of a more basic way basic set of chords that we're interested in, which you can imagine are called the primary triads. And in any major key, the primate, primary triads are the 1, the 4, and the 5. So of course if we were in a different key the chord name would be different but we're always going to be talking about the triads that are built on the first degree of, the, of a major scale, the fourth degree of a major scale, and the fifth degree of a major scale. So in C major, move this up just a little bit, it would be safe to write in C major, the primary triads are C, F, and G. Let's go through the process in a new key and let's only build the primary triads. So let's do treble clef, and maybe let's just do G major. So treble clef, G major. And so we know that the first primary triad we're going to need is the 1. We know the next one we're going to need is the 4. And we know the next one we're going to need is the 5. So in G major, the 1, or the first degree of the major scale, is G. So we're going to build a triad on that once we know what the tonic is. And because this is G major, and we know that all three of the primary triads in major are major quality triads, we could do this individually. G to B is a major third. G to D is a perfect fifth. But we know that this is a G major triad. So the second triad we need to figure out is the 4. So the 4 is built on the 4th degree of the G major scale. So we can count up lines and spaces, G. We already have the key signature, so we can just go up the scale. G is 1, A is 2, B is 3, and C is 4. So we'll build a triad on top of C. We can analyze it, C to E major third, C to G, perfect fifth. But we know that because the primary triads in major are major, this is going to be C major triad. Now, the last one we need to deal with is the fifth degree of G major. So we can count up the scale 5 from G. G, A, B is 3, C is 4, and one more would be D. So we're going to build our triad on D. And again, we analyze it. D to F sharp is a major third. D to A is a perfect fifth, which makes us a D triad. So in G major, with this process, we have learned that the three primary triads in G major are G, C, and D. So there's one more step in the process we need to do. And we're always going to do um, in major keys and minor keys. And the other step in the process happens only on the dominant chord. So I don't know if I said this, but lots of times we refer to the, the one as the tonic, the four as the subdominant, and the five as the dominant. Subtonic. So I'll write those in.
So tonic, subdominant, and dominant. So the last step which we do to the dominant is we want to give this chord, this is a special chord in Western music. Um, there's a long history of how composers have used this chord to get back. It's like the tonic is your house and the dominant is all the stuff you do during the day. And so when you leave your house, you know, you got to go to work and you're stuck in traffic and then, you know, you have a tough day at the office and, you know, then you got to go like do a bunch of stuff on the way home and the grocery store is really busy and you're just like, oh man, when am I going to get home? And then finally, after a long drive, you get home and everything relaxes. And so this is a special chord and it kind of naturally has tension and we sort of naturally want to give it more tension. And so, one thing that we do to give this chord more tension is right now it's just a triad. So we have one, three, five. And you'll notice that these are built on the lines. And so we're going to actually add another note to this chord. And so since we're on the lines, we're just going to add another note on the next line. So the first one is called the first. The second note is the third, the third note is the fifth degree, and this fourth note in the triad is going to be called the seventh, because the distance between the first note and the fourth note is always a seventh degree. D up to C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's a seventh. And so we add this extra note, so one, Anyway, you add the extra note. Then there's two other steps. Then we have to add sevens to the Roman numeral and chord symbol. So that physically means you put a seven here. You don't have to cross it. I just tend to do that. I have no idea why. You put a seven here. So, this is our special step that we have to do to the dominant in all primary triads, major and minor. So we add the extra note, the fourth note, which is either, you know, if we're on the lines, it's on the line. If we're on the spaces, it's on a space. Add the extra note. We don't need to add any accidentals. Don't need to do anything. It's all correct because of the key signature. Then we add our sevens. So that is an overview of the diatonic triads how they work and how we get to the primary triads and that's also an overview of how to build the primary triads in a major key. In the next video I will give you a few examples of that. Thanks.